Welcome back to our media wall DIY build. In part one, you watched me build the lower and top frame and also fit in the electric fire. And now you can see I'm at the point where I can start boarding and plastering the media wall. And it was a bit of a flip up between MDF board and plasterboard, but in the end, we decided to choose plasterboard just because it gets a better finish. We went for a 9.5 millimeter thickness and we did that basically just to maximize the space inside of the TV unit. But MDF board definitely is an option if you can't plaster yourself. In part one, you saw me fit all the extra noggins. That not only strengthens the frame, but it also gives me an extra place to fix the plasterboard to. So I saw this tool in the shop as I was buying the plasterboard and it actually works really well. A few of the tools that you will need is obviously a Stanley blade and this little edge shaver works really well too. And the shelf that we decided to add actually turned out really well. It's a really nice size and we also have really good access to that plug socket. This part's a little bit more exciting for us as we can actually see the media wall coming together. So it goes from a bare frame to an actual media wall. So sit back and watch me bring this thing to life. And there it is, all boarded up, and now the vision is actually coming to life. All right, so I've finished the plasterboarding now. You can see that I've started to go around some of the joins with this, some of this mesh tape. So the next part is now to start fitting all the corner trims and the stock beads around the fire, and then it will be ready to plaster. So yeah, as I said, I've fit, started fitting some of this mesh tape. Half flipped it over this wood here, because I am gonna fill this eventually. This side isn't gonna be plastered. So my plan with this is I bought some stock beads. That's gonna go on this front face section. And then from there, once it's all been plastered, I'm gonna then put some wood filler on this to meet this slip here. So yeah, hopefully that made sense. You can see here I'm just using some bonding plaster to stick it down with a couple of nails in each side as well. And I decided to use this stock bead just because it helps out when I come to plaster and it also gives that clean finish line. And then on every other corner, I go around with this thin coat corner bead and that will basically give me my finish when I come to plaster. If you are wondering how to plaster, I've got a recent video on our channel, so make sure to check that out. As you can imagine, paying a plasterer wouldn't be cheap to do this, so it definitely is worth learning the skill. All the trims and tape are on now. It actually takes so much longer than you'd ever imagine just to do little jobs like that. Doing all the cuts and then putting the tape all over after it just takes so much longer than you think. So we're at the point now where we can be ready to plaster. So yeah, next thing to do will be plastering. So I forgot to film the front part just because I was just so busy with it, but there is a few things worth mentioning. I went round on all the corner beads and used the mesh tape on the corner bead itself just to add extra strength and obviously I don't mean overlapping the corner I just mean going up to it and leaving a couple mil gap and yeah here you can see me using the speed skim just to flatten it all up and then again with the trowel and some water just to get the smooth finish and yeah as I said the video is on our channel if you fancy giving it a go My plan with the plastering was to get the main face and sides done first and then worry about the inlet bits after. Because the last thing you want to do is spend too much time on the little bits and then before you know it all your plaster's dried out. And I'm not going to lie, I did struggle on this bottom shelf. It was really awkward to get my trowel in there. I have got a smaller trowel but it just it was still really awkward to do. So 
you can see here I've used a bit of wood filler on that bottom lip just to meet the corner bead and yeah that really finishes it off and looks really nice. And that is how you build a media wall from scratch. Obviously it hasn't been painted properly yet, it's only had the mist coat on. But yeah, for the end result I'm actually really happy with how it's turned out. Now all that's left to do pretty much is just paint it with the finished layer and then get the TV and everything else sorted and yeah. So make sure you stay tuned for, for our upcoming videos with the living room renovation and you'll get to see us finishing off the media wall properly, putting all the logs and stuff in the fire. That's going to be all on the end reveal. So yeah, stay tuned for all that.